Good morning, Grade Nines, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade Nine Natural Sciences lesson. I'm so glad you could join us today. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade nine at worksheetcloud.com. Finally, it's Friday. Hope you have that fun Friday feeling. So happy Friday to all of you. I hope that you make it a great day. I am Mrs. Ernston, the Worksheet Cloud Grade 9 Natural Sciences teacher. Please make sure that you have something to write with, so pen, paper, or your books, or whatever you're using at school, and get ready for this lesson. So today we're going to be having a look at chemical reactions. So you're going to learn what is a chemical reaction? How can we represent what happens in a chemical reaction? What do the different symbols in a chemical reaction equation mean? What do the numbers in a chemical reaction mean? And how do we translate between word equations, picture equations, and chemical equations. So for us to engage in the lesson, what I would like you to do is I would like you to use your observation skills. So at this stage, you'll be using your eyes. And I want you to tell me what can you see in these diagrams. And as you are looking, at these diagrams, what does it make you think about? And what content comes to mind? And then after you've had a think about it, what does it make you wonder about? So if you need to pause the video for a moment, to engage in this I see, I think, I wonder, please do. Okay, so let us refer to the images A and B. So A is a sparkler and B is an icicle that's busy melting. You can see a drop of liquid at the tip of the icicle. So the second point I have for you is, is the image showing a chemical change or a physical change? So think about that. Is a show, so what's happening in the sparkler here, is this a chemical change? Or is it a physical change? And then if you have a look at B, is a chemical change happening here? Or is this a physical change? And then what are you seeing or what do you know that made you say that? So you may need to pause the screen while you answer these questions. So we'll learn more about it this lesson, but what's happening in the sparkler is a chemical change. And what is happening in this icicle melting here is a physical change. So today's lesson is going to focus on the chemical changes. So as we go into today's lesson, there are three levels I'd like you to think about. And that is a macroscopic level, a microscopic level, and a sub-microscopic level. And while you're thinking about these elements, I want you to keep our topic that we're doing in mind. So everything you've learned about elements and compounds and chemical reactions. 
So macroscopic is going to be everything that you observe around you using your senses. So your sight, your smell, your taste, your touch, your hear. That is everything that we can see on a macroscopic level. Microscopic level will be that what can we observe or see under a microscope. So we can still see it, but we often need, we can't see it with our naked eye. We'll need a microscope or equipment to have a better look at it. And then on a sub microscopic level, that is how we imagine it to be. So I'm going to refer to these terms as we move through the lesson. If you need to pause the screen to copy these down in your book so we can refer back to them, please will you? So the next activity, you'll need your pen and paper for this. I want you to draw, which means using illustrations or diagrams or sketches or any pictures that come to mind, or anything that you can imagine, or anything that you can think of when I say the word water. So please pause the screen, pause the video while you do this activity. I also don't want this activity to take too long. So please spend at most two minutes representing water with illustrations and drawings. Wow, I would love to see all your diagrams now. I'm sure they are absolutely amazing. So this is just ideas that I thought that maybe some of you would come up with. So maybe some of you drew rain, maybe some of you drew a cup of water, a pot boiling on the stove, maybe some of you thought of ice in your cool drink, um, water dripping from a tap, some of you might have thought of icebergs and water and clouds, some of you might have thought of a river and streams, um, some of you might have thought of swimming, some of you might have imagined a bottle of bottled water, some of you might have thought of a drop falling into water, some of you might have thought of watering the plants or having a shower or cleaning your car. Maybe some of you thought of a fireman using water. And then some of you might have thought of representing water by writing the word water. Some of you might have represented it using a ball diagram and using the symbols for hydrogen and oxygen. Or some of you might have written a molecule of water writing H2O. And others of you might have done the solid liquid gas. I'm sure your pictures are absolutely beautiful. So please hang on to them. And when you get back to school, you can show your teacher your representation of water. So to link back to our words of macroscopic, submicroscopic, and symbolic. So a beaker filled with water, this we can see. We can see it, we can feel it, we can smell it, you can touch it. We can look at water underneath the microscope. And we can look at it on a sub-microscopic level. Okay, so we can make a ball diagram of what we think um, water will look like by representing the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms. And we can draw diagrams with atoms and arrows showing how they move in a gas and in a liquid and a solid. Now in today's lesson, we're going to be having a look at the symbolic representation of water. So that is using the word water or writing water, how it is made up of atoms and elements. So in, an, in a water molecule, if we have a look here, it's made up of two atoms of hydrogen. So we represent that here by the number two atoms of hydrogen. Hydrogen is the symbol that we use to represent hydrogen on the periodic table is H. And a water molecule is made up of one. That's why there's an invisible one here. 
one atom of water. And together, that makes um, one molecule of water. You can pause the video now if you'd like to take the diagram down. So just as a recap from previous lessons, these diagrams here, so our icicle melting, our, our solid icicle forming a liquid droplet, that is a physical change, okay? That is melting. That is going from a solid to a liquid. So water can exist in the three different states as a solid or liquid or gas. But at the end of the day, water is the same compound that we can represent in the diagram here with one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen that we can chemically write as H2O. But the changes that are happening in this diagram are not chemical changes. The substance is still remaining as water. So in a solid, we have water molecules. When it physically changes into a liquid, we still have water molecules. Okay, so the only thing that is changing is the forces of attraction and repulsion between the particles of matter. So the only thing that's changing here is the forces of attraction between the water molecules. And in each state, the water molecules behave differently. So just remember that the icicle melting is a physical change. In today's lesson, we want to focus on the chemical changes. So how would you define a chemical reaction? You can press pause and give yourself a minute to write down an answer. So if you need some help, maybe these keywords can help you to define a chemical reaction. So maybe you can use the word reactant or product, bonds, rearranged, atoms, molecules, and new compounds. So let's see if you can better define what you wrote down as a chemical reaction and add these words. You can pause the video to improve your definition. So in essence, a chemical reaction is when we have a rearrangement of atoms in which one or more compounds are changed into new compounds. So we have atoms that are in reactants and what happens is when we have that chemical reaction, the atoms and the molecules get rearranged. So the bonds in the atoms and molecules break, they are rearranged, and after the chemical reaction, we have products and we have new set of compounds. So we can represent all chemical reactions by using equations and models. Before I go into chemical equations, there is just a concept I need to remind you about. I'm sure you have heard about it. It is the law of conservation of mass. And if that's something new to you, write this down as we progress through the lesson. The law of conservation of mass is that in a closed or isolated system, matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can be changed from one form to another form, but the mass is conserved. So that means any time that atoms separate from each other and recombine into different combinations of atoms, we say that a chemical reaction has occurred. So that means in a chemical reaction, 
No atoms are lost or gained. They are simply rearranged. Just a reminder. So in mathematic equations, you use an equal sign. So for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. What's very important is that in scientific equations, we use an arrow. We do not use an equal sign. Okay, so for example, C plus O2 arrow, which indicates reaction, produces CO2. So let's try and understand chemical reactions using word equations. So in a chemical reaction, when hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to form water, we can write a word equation for the reaction as follows. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives us water. So here we have the arrow that represents the chemical reaction. So this side of the arrow we have a before situation. Okay, so everything this side of the arrow, everything to the left of the arrow represents substances that we have before the reaction takes place. So we call these the reactants. So in this example, what are the reactants in this reaction? Yes, they are the hydrogen and the oxygen. So to the right of the arrow, we have after the reaction or after the situation. So this side represents the substances that we have after the reaction has taken place. And we call this the product. So what is the product of this reaction? Yes, you guessed it right. It was water. So please pause the video if you need to get this information down. The next way we can represent chemical reactions is using picture equations. So the chemical reaction of hydrogen reacting with oxygen can also be represented with pictures. So the diagram below shows that the atoms of two hydrogen molecules, so here we have a hydrogen molecule, so remember hydrogen is diatomic in its natural state so that is h2 and we have one molecule and here we have another molecule so it shows two hydrogen molecules and one molecule of oxygen remember oxygen is also a diatomic molecule that's why there are two atoms here but we are reacting it with one molecule of oxygen so we find these on the left which means these are the reactants and they rearrange themselves to form, there's two molecules, here's one molecule and there's a second molecule, two molecules of water. And we represent water with the red atom being the oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. And these are to the right of the arrow, which means these are the products. What? kind of representation is this? Is this macroscopic? So can we touch it and feel it and smell it? Or is it submicroscopic? Are we imagining what we think the molecules and atoms look like? Or is it symbolic? Are we using words and symbols? It is a submicroscopic picture 
and I want you to see, can you convert the sub-microscopic picture into a symbolic one? So what is the product in the above reaction? These are the products here. Two molecules of H2 plus one molecule of O2. What are the reactants in the above diagram where well, we have a look at the arrow so the reactants and um, the products are going to be to the right so here we have the products and there are two molecules of h2o so i want you to see if you can write the formula now pause the screen So lastly, we can represent a chemical reaction in terms of chemical formulae or symbols. And we call it a chemical reaction. And the chemical equation for the above reaction would be as follows. 2H2 plus O2 gives us the reaction, two molecules of H2O. So what kind of representation is this? Is it macroscopic, submicroscopic, or symbolic? Yes, it's symbolic. And we still have reactants on the left and products on the right. So here is our arrow. We have our reactants on the left and our products on the right. So when we have a look at this chemical reaction, I'm sure a lot of you have been wondering, why is there a two at the front here? Why is there a two at the bottom here? So I'm going to take a moment to explain it to you. So here we have a chemical reaction. We represent the chemical reaction using an arrow. So here is our arrow. To the left of the arrow, we have the reactants. To the right of the arrow, we have the product. Now, when we have a look at the numbers in front, so in front of the hydrogen, we have a 2. In front of the oxygen, we have an invisible 1. In front of the water molecule, we have a 2. We call those coefficients. So just like in maths, you have invisible 1. It's the same in science. So the number at the front, we call the coefficient. So in this case, we have two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, and two molecules of water. So that means that the coefficient refers to the number of molecules that are part of the chemical reaction. The subscript. So these are the numbers that we find at the bottom here. So here we have two hydrogen atoms we have two oxygen atoms and in one molecule of water we have two hydrogen atoms and an invisible one which indicates an oxygen atom so just to recap here in one molecule of water we have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom so in one molecule of oxygen gas we have two atoms of oxygen in one molecule of hydrogen gas we have two atoms of hydrogen if you're still a little bit unsure of this atoms and elements and compounds and molecules and how they combine please go and have a look at our previous um, worksheet cloud lessons they will explain it to you um, and you might also be able to go back to some of the grade 8 lessons from last year. Those lessons are also on Worksheet Cloud and you can go and see if it helps with your understanding. You can pause the screen now and you can copy down this information. So just as a reminder, 
the numbers in front of the chemical formulae for the compounds in the equation are called coefficients and they refer to the number of molecules in the reaction. The smaller numbers that we use inside and below the formula, we call those subscripts and those refer to the number of atoms. It is very important that you understand this before moving on to tomorrow's lesson, which will be all about balancing equations. So here is a challenge for you this lesson. I want to see if you are able to write the chemical reaction using pictures and words and symbols for the reaction taking place in this diagram. Yes, the sparkler from the beginning of the lesson. So some of you may be rushing off to Google to see what you can find. But pause for a moment and see if you can do it on your own without going to the internet. Let me give you some hints and tips along the way. So if you've gone onto Google, you will find that there are lots of different metals that are part of making sparklers and that give them all their different bright colors, the orange colors and the white colors as they sparkle. But for this chemical reaction, let us assume that the metal on the sparkler that's burning in oxygen that's in the air is magnesium. So are you able to use pictures? So this will represent one atom of magnesium. This will represent one atom of oxygen. Remember, oxygen is a diatomic molecule. And when we combine them, we get red atom combined with two, sorry, the blue atom combined with two red atoms. Remember, this indicates our chemical reaction. So these are our reactants, our magnesium reacting with oxygen. And in this combustion reaction, we are making a compound, magnesium oxide. And here is our word equation. Magnesium plus oxygen gives us magnesium oxide. Remember, in the naming of this compound, when we get a metal reacting with a non-metal, we write the name of the metal first in full, that's magnesium, but with, we leave a space, and then the second element, if it's a non-metal, we change the suffix. Instead of writing oxygen, we change it to oxide, we add ide. There's more about naming compounds in yesterday's lesson. So if you missed out on it, or you're a little bit unsure, go back and watch it. And then lastly, are you able to do the symbols for this diagram? Well, magnesium, we represent by using Mg. Oxygen, O, we remember that it's diatomic, and when we combine them together, we get MgO. Wow, so that was a really tricky activity, but I look forward to the next lesson where we are going to have a look at balancing chemical equations. So please join us for that lesson. So lastly, just to evaluate this lesson, here I've given you a set of equations and I want you to go through and I want you to tell me what type of equation is it? So is it a word equation? Is it a picture equation? Or is it a symbolic equation? So pause the video and do this evaluation quickly. And here are the answers. 
So this is using pictures. Here we are using words. Carbon dioxide plus water gives us glucose and oxygen. This is using pictures again. This is using symbols from the periodic table. Iron plus oxygen gives us iron oxide. Here is a really complicated chemical equation. And we're going to deal more with these chemical equations tomorrow when we balance equations. That's a pictorial representation. And then lastly, at the bottom, we have chemical or symbolic. So to summarize this lesson and end off, I would like you to write the following chemical reaction down. Two molecules of H2 plus O2 gives us two molecules of H2O. And I want you to take everything that you have learned in today's lesson about using words and pictures um, and subscripts and coefficients, and I want you to do a summary of today's lesson. I don't want you to spend more than five minutes doing it, but I think it will be a really, really good activity to end off today's lesson by summarizing everything you know. So you can add picture diagrams, you can add word diagrams, you can show your understanding of products and reactants and chemical reactions, the difference between chemical reactions and physical reactions. And it will be a lovely summary that you can share back um, when you get back to school. If you have any questions throughout today's lesson, please will you email grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com. So in today's lesson on chemical reactions, I hope now that you can understand the following. That chemical reactions can be represented with models. That chemical reactions are represented with symbols and chemical equations. That the subscript is a number that indicates the number of atoms of an element found in the formula. That the numbers in the front of the compounds indicate the ratio in which molecules react. In a chemical reaction, no atoms are lost or gained in the reaction. They are just simply rearranged. In a chemical reaction, bonds are broken in the reactants and new bonds are formed in the products. And you have learned how to write a chemical reaction using pictures, words, and symbols. Tomorrow's lesson will focus on balancing chemical reactions and chemical equations. So thanks for watching grade nines. I hope you had a super lesson and go out and enjoy your Friday. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud and let's say goodbye with a bit of music.